Hello, everyone. Um, the speaker tonight uh, will be about data and how not to make bad decisions uh, with data, which I find uh, like an interesting uh, sort of topic because uh, very often there is a lot of talk about uh, how to make the right decisions, but uh, I think not enough of how to try to avoid the most common mistakes. Um, just a very quick slide about myself. I'm, an, I'm now the analytics lead at Quoni from JTB Group, a travel company where I follow analytics and data science sort of projects. Uh, before I worked some work for Groupon when started more of an old school uh, BI and data warehousing and analytics um, world. Um, and, and in the meantime, I've had a few experience in startup, in real estate, in jobs, search, and, and social media. Uh, so I never specialize in actually one vertical. So I, I've I worked like both on the data engineering and data science and, and analytics side. So um, that's why um, I kind of like uh, the sort of challenges in which you need to um, see the data, not just from, not basically so just uh, from, uh, from just uh, basically some single aspect, but to have a more wider uh, view. Um, um, and also, I teach a course uh, at Product Schools um, when we run it here in London on Data for Manager. Um, so, how not to make bad decisions with data? Uh, the way I see it, there, has, there is the hard way and the easy way. And the hard way, as I was saying, very often we want to think how can we make the best decisions? Like how we need to evaluate a product if you are a product manager or we. Uh, we need to, to recommend to our managers how to do stuff. And, and so then we try to think of all the possible way. But uh, what I want, the same is talk that this is very hard. I mean, there are a lot of challenges. And, uh, but there are more simple things. But I'm not saying that you shouldn't aim to do that. But I'm saying that if you haven't first done the simpler way, so to try to look at the, more, at the most common things that normally are going wrong, uh, you shouldn't start doing the left part first. So um, that's what this talk is about, like to, to try to look at uh, what can go wrong and why very often it is very difficult to make the right decision with data. Uh, so why is making right decision with data so difficult? Um, because the way I see it, there are a number of things, I mean, these just an example, like a list of things which, which in my view uh, represents some common aspect, but uh, uh, there can be more. But uh, um, the point is that there can be a number of things that uh, need necessarily to go right in order to, in order to just have the right decision, the right outcome. If just one of these goes wrong, the whole decision will be wrong, right? Uh, and, and what are these, uh, these things? Well, one of the most, uh, I mean, it seems like basic things, but uh, it's also one of the most important is actually the first one. So raw data issues. Who has experienced some, some, some issues in the raw data in the current work? Uh, most often they're missing raw data or it's incomplete. Some other, uh, some other so cases in, in, in some data that comes either from your company or from outside, which examples? Uh, Let's see. So was your case data from uh, data, data basically saw that you had in your company or, or just uh, some external uh, uh, data? No, uh, it's in most companies that I've worked in. I, when I start uh, asking questions, they find yeah. that they didn't collect the correct information to answer these questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, correct. I mean, uh, uh, there can be like, uh, um, for example, one of the startups uh, that I worked before was uh, ingesting data from Twitter and Instagram. So it was uh, some external data. And uh, as long as something was going wrong in this uh, ingestion workflow, the data that we had uh, was not correct. Or, uh, or uh, other work that I've done with the sales data. Like, I don't know if any of you have worked with Salesforce or uh, some uh, sales data, but uh, if people uh, are just inputting some data wrong on like the status on the life, lifetime of the product sales cycle, all your reporting will be wrong. So this seems like a trivial thing, but uh, it's actually very often a common thing. When we see example like on the next um, part, which is so if you wanna evaluate data, we need first of all to choose the right metrics. 
Um, and we'll see that uh, even though sometimes we think that we know the product, it seems easy, okay, we need to choose, but this is not necessarily like a simple thing. And even if we have chosen them, how we calculate them is not necessarily, there is just one way to calculate. And then even if we choose the right metric, we have defined the calculation in, 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 in a way that is correct, how we give meaning to that metric. And we see examples uh, for each of these points. Um, other point that uh, we see at the end, uh, like an example of, is about uh, the aggregation. Uh, who has some experience uh, with uh, data warehouse and aggregate tables? Yeah. Uh, so you probably know that like uh, all the steps uh, uh, that you need to aggregate, you need to think what is the granularity that you have, what is the business view. Um, so we try to see some example of how uh, we cannot necessarily achieve uh, the right decision if we don't view data, at least from a business point of view, at the right level. And then there is like a more uh, sophisticated level which we won't cover much in this talk, but if you have some question at the end, I would be happy to answer, uh, which is more like um, how we interpret, uh, if we, for example, run a machine learning model, how we interpret the outcome of the model. Uh, does this just mean the correlation between my input variable and output variable, or can I infer some causation? Uh, so these parts, uh, if we want to give like a, a scope to this part, this is mainly data engineering side, so it can be issues in data ingestion, data engineering, data warehouse, uh, IT side, so that part of thing. That part could be under the head of business analytics, uh, something on machine learning as well, if we need to choose the right metrics. Uh, a lot of business thought, even uh, people who are not necessarily like in the technical side. Uh, this is mainly a technical aspect, but there needs to be an input from a business side as well in how we interpret the, the data. So again, it is a, a collaboration between IT and, and business. And this is mostly a data science challenge, like when people who do machine learning. So we can see now an example. So a short case um, to see how uh, it's not necessarily a straightforward thing to, to, to define and to choose, uh, in this case, uh, the match. So, I don't know if you follow the sector, but very, very, in like these last few years, there has been a lot of hype about the health tech startups we want to measure and uh, diagnose uh, image scans and uh, radiologists, and they uh, are trying to do better than doctors in given outcome uh, if they look at your scan and the image if you have a disease um, or not. Um, so let's say that there is a fictional health tech startup which uh, has this product which, is, uh, which, which has thousands or millions of images and wants to assess whether or not this person uh, has basically some disease or not from a certain type. So the outcome of this product is binary, either yes or no. Uh, you look at this image, either you, you, basically, you basically have this disease or not. So it's just... Uh, some classification engine to use the, the term for machine learning. And uh, looking at past data, the number of patients uh, that actually do have this disease that the startup is trying to assess is only 1% of all, the, of all the data that the company receives. Uh, currently, the CEO of the company looks at the rate of accuracy, uh, which is simply the face the most normal and trivial metric, like the, it's just uh, the, percentage of, the percentage of cases that we, that, that we have the right way, right? That, that we say the right answer. If it was yes, we say yes. If, if it was no, we say no. Right? Correct answer. And it is only 95%. Uh, 95%. So, the, so the founder from these companies is basically not happy and want to increase this accuracy. Right? You are the product manager, and um, uh, you want to find an uh, easy way. So let's say that you are a lazy product manager. You, you don't want to find to do the kind of hard job or redoing all the technology and uh, hiring 15 people and uh, doing the. You, you just want to find a simple way because you want to make your job happy. And he wants to increase this 95% to whatever high you, you, you can. Which way or ways you, you think that you could, you could do something? You can bias the data that you use to train or test the algorithm. 
fair enough, <laughs> you could uh, treat it. Uh, but uh, let's say that, yeah, you are lazy, but, uh, but also it's a fair product margin. You don't want to cheat. I mean, you, 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 you just want to do things in a fair way. Uh, so let's say that you, you, don't go with, uh, you don't go that way. What else? You take a sample of, uh, of cases that were found to be wrongly identified and try to find out what's, what's a common pattern, what do they have in common? Okay, so that would be a proper way. Let's say you want to improve your product. Let's say so you you are you are looking at backwards your product. You are saying my product is not working very very well. I'm trying to learn from my mistakes, and then you need to figure it out. Which of course is something that hopefully people will uh, do in practice. Um, so that's certainly a um, way. But 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 here, what I want to focus is purely uh, if you f if you just think of the metric side, like you just want to do a lazy way without necessarily doing a change of, of like uh, the fundamentals of your product. Set your threshold so it classifies everybody as not having to do it. That's the thing, right? So uh, when you have a classifier, you have um, your range, you can have your algorithm, and, and it gives you a probability if eventually, depending on the system, but eventually it gives something that uh, can be read uh, as, as basically the probability that the image uh, will lead to a patient uh, that has the disease or not. A simple way, just say, okay, so everybody is fine. No outcome. 1,000 uh, of patients give an image, you always say, it's okay, you don't have a disease. You are fine. You just have a stupid line of code, one line that always say no. <laughs> you might have uh, your complex argument, but uh, you always say no. And, and if you do that way, which would be the accuracy rate, considering that the disease occurs in about 1% of patients that are analyzed? 99%. So you could easily achieve 99% just with one simple line of code. So let's say that you do that, right? And uh, your founder is very happy to say, wow, I should give you like a rise. You are a very smart guy. Let's use your product in production. Uh, let's use this with some patient. Then after a while, he starts to receive uh, some complaints and maybe even to pay uh, some penalties to people that actually had the disease and they weren't uh, uh, seen that they had the disease. And uh, so you are fired because you say, no, that's, that's not the way it works. So the founder of a company researches uh, like a bit more and says, okay, maybe accuracy rate uh, is not the best metric or is not the only way. So I should look at something else. And so founder does a bit of research and see, okay, which are, I mean, these are just three of the most common, there are more, but like three common measures, of course, accuracy, which, which we have seen. Another one often called recall and sensitivity, the name comes from medicine. It says uh, when the patient actually has a disease, how often we, we are saying that it, that it does have a disease. Right? So in the first scenario of the system that you were just saying no, which was this metric of recalling sensitivity? Zero. With zero, right? because you were getting no. So let's say that now the manager, the founder of the company say, okay, now I'm not measuring your performance anymore on the first metric, because I know that can be biased. I only want to measure on the second metrics, because uh, if people are not diagnosed, they will sue me and they have to pay a lot of legal costs and whatever. So really, I will link your bonus and performance on this metric here. But again, I say that also the second manager is just a bit lazy and, and how he can, he can actually do and, and act just to improve uh, these metrics. Very the opposite way. He says that everyone has the disease. <laughs> and, then, and then in this case, the, this matrix uh, is at the top. It's, it's, it's just 100%. But if it also look at the accuracy rate, this, uh, of course, will be 1% problem in this case. Um, so in practice, and then there are other metrics like uh, the precision. But in practice, uh, um, what is done in this case is that um, there are some curve like uh, the precision, uh, preci should recall curve in which actually you see the compromise of this matrix. And uh, there is not like one right or wrong 
answer, but you kind of seen a curve and, and again, it is a business decision. There is not one uh, right answer, right? I mean, you just need to think about your business, uh, your, 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 your bigger uh, situation. Um, so this was an example of seeing uh, which can be the tricky challenges of just deciding because sometimes you think that you know how to measure the product, uh, but it's not necessarily a trivial thing. Um, now there is the second, uh, the second line. Let's say, okay, let's say that we know what we want to measure. Like, uh, I don't know if you've worked uh, with uh, web analytics. Is something that any one of you? Yeah. So a, a common metric if you look at uh, Google Analytics or similar tool is the percentage of new users. Like, uh, would seem, at least to me, if I just jump in a slide, the percentage of new users would seem a quite straightforward thing to measure. Right? You would think percentage of new users, okay, there should be only one uh, way to measure. Uh, but actually, it's not. I mean, who has an idea of how you could define, let's say that you have a database of all users. Who, who, who just has an idea of how you could define the percentage of new users, uh, which, uh, which two numbers or, or which definition would you use to say, to calculate this measure? Could be like for a new device, could you do another new user? Um, yeah, so th that, that could be uh, the technical challenge. So you, you are basically so bringing the technical challenge of identifying uh, the new user. Uh, which, is, which is certainly a valid point, so, um, which is for me in the uh, scope uh, of, the, of basically the data that we have. Uh, so we might have challenges of actually seeing is the device the right data, so there could be the cookies like as an alternative if we do web. So there's certainly a, a point uh, that is valid. So we need something to identify the new user, but for this exercise in which uh, um, I just want to focus on the definition. Let's think that you know how to compute and let's say that you, you, you ever use the device or you use the email or registration. You have something that you trust and you say, if a people comes and put the email or the device, I trust that. So uh, that, 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 that part is fine. Uh, but still you have to define the rule, right? You, you see that there is one new device. Uh, so you, you, you can see that user that has come is basically new because it is the first time that I see this device, right? But still, how I calculate the metric because eventually I need a percentage to understand or to, to show my, my manager. Sorry, I think it depends on what we want to see, what we want to learn, whether we want to see growth. In that case, it's how, how many new users we have this period, and that's another kind of access to the problem, whether it's week, day, or whatever, yeah. divided by how many users we had in the previous period, or we might want to know of the users that are using the product in this period, how many of them are new. Yeah, that's a very valid point. Absolutely valid point. So let's bring now the period uh, thing. Uh, let, let, let's just say that you calculate the new users on like a weekly basis and you have a report. If some of you have used uh, Google Analytics, you can see that you can change the period. You can see metrics like, uh, like, like this on the basis of a week or just a month. Let's say that you compute on a weekly basis or you compute on a monthly basis. Would you expect to see the same percentages? like on average or different percentages? What would you expect? Similar. But why they could be different? Just because of a period or because of? Uh, if we compare a week to a month, then there is more probability that during this week there were some events like holidays, festivities, mm. something that- More variability, yeah. Uh, week shorter and Longer. Variability of short, yeah, that's uh, absolutely a valid point. Uh, but uh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, demand of seasonality, so your spikes and your advertising campaigns and things like that will trigger new use. Absolutely, that's something. Um, these are all valid things. There are probably more. Um, one even more trivial thing I think I wanted to show here. Um, 
is let's say that we take February just because example of February there are four weeks that sum up to the month. <laughs> it's 28 days, so we don't need to do maths. Uh, and and uh, let's very see that we have uh, new users in green and the old users in uh, yellow. And let's say that you have two reports, like one in which you look at the full month, so you want to report uh, with your manager uh, which is the percentage uh, of new user for February, so you have just one number, and the other one you have a week by week number, and then maybe you're doing the average of these four weeks. Yeah? So let's see how this can give to different percentages. Um, so if we, if we have a full month, uh, how many we have as new users? We just count three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right? So just the, the, the green one. And um, uh, the old users are just the one at the bottom, right? Because, these are, because this is the same user as before, which came in the first week, and then it came again here. So if we look at the month, uh, this user A, D, and B, we are just counting them once here, right? Because we just look at the users and we ask where they some new user for this month or not. So we just count this twelve. So it will be like forty percent. But if we look at on a week by week basis, here we have we count this three against this three, we have this two against this two. But what happens in week uh, in week three? New user is fine. We we have always two. But uh, the old users, we, we don't have just three, right? We have three, but we've always these two users, which were new users in here, right? Because uh, looking just at uh, here, this period, uh, I don't necessarily, so basically, I just look at the users who were already had some action like in the previous week, right? Regardless if that was in February or not. So I'm basically double counting these users both here for these weeks, like as old users, and also here as new users. And, and this again for like the, the last week. I mean, this, this user here again, A and B, I've already had them in week one, so these are not new users. So if I just do the math, and, and you can see that if you have access to Google Analytics, you can just do, do, do something similar into screens, and you will see. I don't know if you will see this jump, but you will see different uh, numbers and they assess on different. And yes, there could be seasonality, there could be holidays, there could be other stuff, but just one normal bias that you will find that the larger that you have the period, the higher the metric will be. If you do like this on a daily basis, the, the percentage will always go down. Uh, so this can be tricky. Just in case in which you want to compare, you have some historical numbers by week, and then you want to compare it uh, by month. You can't do it. That's just wrong. Right? Um, if you always look at week and if you always look at month, yes, of course, that is, that is fine. So this is an example of uh, how tricky it can be sometimes to compute even metrics, which seems simple. Right? And we can find examples which are more complicated, but I like this example because it seems like an easy, an easy one. Right? Um, and then now let's, let's go to the next step, like uh, give meaning to that matrix. And um, I have uh, uh, this example at my heart because there's a similar case uh, at Groupon in one of the past company that I've worked on. So I don't know if you know how Groupon works, but we were selling uh, discount vouchers and there was one part of the company like in the sales business who had to negotiate deals with restaurants and spas and cinemas. Um, and then there was uh, the consumer side right, that they had to, to buy this deal. And there was a period in which uh, um, the managers uh, or the regional part, uh, they were not happy about how many new business we basically had. We were saying, okay, but we are always showing uh, the same uh, deals. And then the user is not happy because they are not seeing new stuff. Right? So they gave one incentive, which uh, was a metric, in, a metric in the dashboard. I think there was also some commission uh, on that for like the sales manager was, well, okay, we need to increase the percentage of new business, right? Because we want fresh stuff, right? Because if you see a new deal, you're more likely to buy. So there was some valid thought about it, right? Um, and uh, so let's say that you have two sales managers in two regions and 
we, we, we start from the same percentage and the first one manages in three months to increase it to 50% and the director says, wow, you are amazing, you've done a great job. While the second one, yeah, maybe remain stable or try to do a, a small jobs. Uh, so the question that I have for you, uh, if just looking at this data, would you say that this is necessarily a good thing or what could have gone wrong? Right? The problem with uh, the revenue from the existing business. Exactly. That's, that's a very common, uh, and actually that was the case here, like we see at the data. What did it change? It is just existing business were going down. Right? And so the only way to kind of uh, look at it, yes, we, we should measure uh, these, but also we should, we should look at the big picture. And, uh, so that's just a message here. Uh, in this case, it might might seem trivial, like uh, if you look at this, because of course, if you look at this number, uh, it's, it's obvious that the left part is, is wrong. Uh, but if you just look at a subset uh, of your metrics, uh, they might look amazing, uh, but there might be something uh, uh, that you're missing there. Next example, we are here. <laughs> I love this position, actually. I worked for a few years just in this area for startups. And, because this position is like at the corner of Freiburg. Like you walk five minutes north, I mean, five meters north, you are in Hackney, five meters northwest, you are in Islington, and here we are really at the fringe of the city of London. And you walk maybe f five, 10 minutes east, you are in the t t tower where Hamlet. Um, so let's, 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 let's just take uh, this sample borough and uh, um, let's, let's, let's look at some data. Um, from the census and uh, London statistic here. Um, let's, let's first look at the left part of this ball. Like, let's take uh, the Islington case, for example. Uh, we look at uh, the average pay, uh, seems quite decent, right in the top, and there's just London both. Uh, unemployment rate uh, looks quite right. It's 6% is mid of range, but probably the absolute value is probably one of the historical low and even by global standard is quite low. Um, so if we just forget about this right part and we can, I don't know, maybe house prices and we will probably see that the average house price in Islington is quite high. We can have a lot of metrics, right? Which uh, if someone uh, look at these and maybe someone who doesn't live in London, so who doesn't know like all the day to the stuff uh, that we know because uh, we live in London, uh, they might say, okay, so uh, this is a rosy picture, that's a wonderful board. But, but then they, we had one metric, like percentage of children living in household that are not in work. And you know, actually, it is the top one. And actually, in the top five, there are one, two, and three of just the borough that we have here in just 15 meters. Of, of five minute walking from our hamlets. And we are three of the top five. So let's take the case of Islington. How it can be possible that looking at these metrics, and again, we, we, we can, can basically so look at many more. Like uh, they would look at the very rich people in work uh, and a lot of stuff. But then we look at families, we, and we're just looking at children, and we have. 25 percent, I mean, one out of four children in Islington lives in a family who, who have no job. So how that can be possible? What are we missing in the left part? Uh, the size of the household or the family state of people who are living there. Uh, yes, could, yeah, sure, this is uh, yeah, the type of, uh, but how can you expand it more? I mean, uh, it's probably on the right direction, but why is not, why still we have like an unemployment rate of 6% and 25% of, of families? Most, oh, sorry. most people who are uh, living in Winston, they are focus on their on money, on their careers, on earning money, not on family uh, values. And mm. those who are unemployed, they mm. have more time for family. <laughs> <laughs> could be, could be. What else? It would be good to see income distribution from the first round. Like maybe if you have an average 
uh, salary, but maybe that the distribution is really skewed. Okay. Very valid point. So to look at yeah. And I think we're being to see kind of like how many of the households are like single person households, or how many of them actually have children in them. Maybe have a really small uh, amount of people with house with children, but a quarter of those people have have income problems. Have really low That's a very valid point. Yeah. The amount of social housing available in the area? Absolutely. And especially if that amount of, of social housing has some correlation with the fact that people have children, right? Uh, and so I think you, I think, uh, you, you, you basically attach this point. And the way I just was bringing here, because try to basically have an abstraction of, of, of here, and you can view from different pers pers perspectives, that what we are missing here is uh, the granularity of that, right? Uh, all these measures could be the median house prices, but even looking at the distribution of, of income just at an absolute le level, it will still look at data without looking at the type of household. And these are all points that have come up. We just look at, 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 the, at, at, at the overall. But we don't know, is it because uh, this average is because we have maybe the single people or couples who have a job in the cities, um, who are bringing these metrics down and this metric up. And maybe these represent the majority of people that do live in Islington uh, because people want to live central and maybe they don't have children or have a job. And maybe there is another part that it, it may not be the majority, but, but which does have children which share this kind of match. So the, 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 kind, the point here is that all this match here miss the fact whether or not the people have children, yes or no. Right? We are just looking at the top, at, at basically the top date. So if we want to see this, we should really, we should really, so look at the flag, does the person that we consider in this data, do they have children or not? And the, if we can add that, that flag, we can start looking at different data. And again, that's not about trying to give an explanation, trying to give reasons. Uh, so it's not about looking at the causality of stuff. It's, uh, it's just trying to uh, look at uh, which is the granularity of data that we're looking at. This was to bring the granularity of data. So how you could be skewed if you don't look at data at the right granularity. Um, so now looking at one more common example that um, um, most of us have probably faced in business, like let's say that you have a mobile app um, and um, you are looking at this chart. If you look at this chart, I say, wow, that's, that's not good, right? <laughs> New users are going down. The users that are using my app are spending less time. The conversion rate, uh, whatever conversion rate means, uh, registration, purchases, uh, action, which you define, is going down. You say, wow, that's a disaster. <laughs> uh, but that's not necessarily bad. I mean, why is not necessarily bad? Why actually this could be a very healthy company? Think again of the previous slide of the granular stuff. Yeah, it could be exactly that. Right? This metric is not enough because we're optimizing other stuff, yes. What else? Even more basic, I would, I would, I would, I would say. The marketing, so I believe that the start, they spend a lot of money in marketing in order to get these users while in the end it's more the well-established users so they don't pay any more marketing. Absolutely. Here, we don't know the acquisition channel of this user. These are not all users who, from their own, come and visit our app, right? I mean, okay, here we have 50,000 users, but we could have spent 5 million euros to bring those users. We might have featured thousands or millions of ads on Facebook just to bring that, that, that user, which might not have necessarily been like a wild choice. Or maybe it was, but, but I mean, simply, it was normal that we ran a campaign here and we know that uh, some of these users will convert and not. So there's certainly one, one, one thing that, uh, that we, need to, we need to consider. So we don't know if these users uh, are coming from a paid channel, so we've paid to acquire them or they, uh, or they just come to our website. 
so let's say that this is the case. Right? So this explains the, the left part. So we look at this by channel and we look, OK, if we, if we remove the paid channel or the Facebook campaigns, this looks stable or is actually quite growing, uh, or whatever it is. So the, the left part looks fine. But still, we have a right part. Uh, still, still, this metric go, go down. Uh, why, why also this uh, is something that is it also something that could could be normal or acceptable? I was wondering actually, what if it was like an app which was doing maybe some kind of social good and then it showed that there's a less, a lower conversion rate, maybe you've done all the world's social good. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, here we, we can see like uh, the conversion rate like is a general uh, uh, is a general thing that actually your app wants to maximize. So let's say that you are an app that you want to maximize social good, you maximize the conversion to make a donation. Right? So, uh, so let's say that we trust actually these metrics. That it, it is what we want actually to maximize. So we don't challenge here with metrics, which is something that instead from the previous slide uh, something. Uh, that, 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 you, that you should, should do, but uh, for just uh, this exercise, we just assume that we, we don't challenge that part. Maybe that is more efficient, so the users need to spend less time to do their job on the actual app. What is more efficient? The, so the app, like, oh. say they want to do something with the app, like, uh, like buy something. Okay, like very valid point, so. very valid point, yes. Uh, then that, that could would be a case for the time. Maybe less for the, for like, uh, the conversion rate. Um, but uh, yes, but uh, let's say here in this case that we can add maybe other free form metrics uh, which uh, try to, to, to have a compensation for that. Uh, and in this specific c c case is not that uh, we are not looking at the right metric. I mean, these metrics uh, are actually some representative of what we want to uh, see. Fair enough, could be, absolutely. And actually that... <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, if we look at three months, especially if you have uh, like an e-commerce uh, website uh, um, in December, actually it, sh it should be the other way around. Uh, so absolutely seasonality. So maybe you, you, you should look at the say with some adjustment of seasonality or uh, a year to year uh, sort of basis. Um, what are... It doesn't mean you correlate the data to like volume users. You could have a much bigger volume and maybe you're attracting people who are maybe a little bit less engaged, but you're I think that's going in the direction uh, that I want to show here. Uh, so the volume of users we have, we start from a different, uh, different uh, sort of base. Uh, what? Could it be that you, your, your app is more targeted now? So originally you were getting a lot of users that came and took a look or tried to figure out what your app was for, spent a lot of time yeah. doing that, and then realized, oh, this isn't for me, so then disengaged, right, and didn't... didn't and they do, absolutely. But now your app is more targeted, it's very clear, you know, what you're there for, and so users come on, if it's not for them, they're gone again quickly, and if it is for them, they'll convert yeah. quickly. Absolutely, but it's something similar to the time spent, uh, uh, like, argument, which is true, it's something that you could apply also to the conversion rate, maybe. Uh, yes, you have a conversion rate, that is lower, but, but you start from a different base. And, and so, and, and, and this kind of argument would mean to challenge those matches, which means something has changed, we need to review all, 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 all points, all points that, that can be valid. Uh, what else? Yes, could be, absolutely. Uh, here, we are not normalizing by product. Uh, it could uh, it, it could be that maybe we were selling products uh, that were uh, less expensive, like in October. So people were converting at a higher rate because they were just buying a one pound uh, thing. And here we're selling a product on average uh, at a higher price. So it's, uh, uh, it is hard. Uh, yes, uh, absolutely, valid point. Uh, what else, though, that even could normalize uh, across, all, across all these things? So let's say that um, the product is the same, uh, there is no seasonality, uh, we have not changed uh, substantially uh, the 
type of uh, users in terms of demographics or acquisition um, is still pretty much uh, all similar. The only difference really was that, uh, yeah, we've run a big campaign in October. Uh, I'm trying to give you some hints. So we, we, we had like a, a huge burst of new users in October when we have a bit less in November. And in December, the majority of users that we had were not new users, but were since the new one is, so probably if we look at the percentage of new users, probably the majority of users using the app are actually not new. Could we make an assumption that the new users have the same characteristic as the old users? Or how we could normalize for, how, how, how could, could that impact? So, I'm not sure if this is correct, but maybe if like, you had a user for a long time and they're more experienced, maybe they don't need to use the app for as long, maybe they're more efficient. That's exactly in the direction. So it can be the reason. So that what I'm trying to say is just one of the reasons uh, that they can use. Uh, without even, without even uh, so looking at the reason, the cohort of that user, I don't know if any of you has looked at some cohort uh, analysis. So um, if we would normalize this data by the month uh, in which the user was acquired, uh, this was not necessarily be like uh, the same. So what happens very often when you acquire user, like in an app, like, like, like in the first week, you register to the app, you are very like excited, I want to use the app, I want to try, let's see, I'm, I'm just inviting my friends. Then after a week, you get bored of it. I mean, there may be some users who convert and become your loyal customer base, uh, but it's, it, when, uh, is something normal that after a few days or weeks or months, there are less users which were active with respect to like the previous week. So one way to see if actually that's the case, or at least how strong this is of an effect, is to normalize this by cohort. So not just to look at the conversion rate, but the way we could see, okay, what is here the conversion rate for users registered for the first time the previous month, which was in September? And then we compare with the conversion rate for users which, which had the registration in this month and this in this month, right? I haven't here the slide for that, but this might, for example, show that the data is stable or actually it grew up. We, 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 we don't know. Um, but the point here is that uh, uh, we need to normalize by user, not all user are born equal. <laughs> so, um, we, we need, if, if just we look at this match, we need really to, to think, and, and we have mentioned some of these uh, actually from your points. Um, uh, <coughs> so we discussed about the user acquisition channel, they paid or not paying. What, what I was uh, explaining now was the cohort. Um, people could come from different uh, device uh, that could convert uh, more or less because of the type of device um, <coughs> can be, marketplace in which uh, not all users are the same. You have a seller and a buyer. You can't look at the same match. You could say these are becoming more sophisticated. You, 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 you could look at demographic. But the main point here is that, uh, yeah, yeah, just looking at the chart like this, the direction can, can be one, but the key is to go granular. Like, so like basically here we could say, if we don't look at the dimension or where these people had children, yes or no, we could miss this stuff, if we, if we, if, if just uh, we looked here, if we don't know what uh, the acquisition channel or when the user was acquired, actually we could see a picture which doesn't look right, but maybe actually this company is health. That's all for me. I, I think we have time for some questions. I go back to this one. If actually you, f you think of something that is not listed here, uh, but you guys have experienced it like in your day-to-day -day work of things that you've seen that went wrong from data, feel free to share it, that would be great. I have a question. I'm quite new to all of this and I was just wondering if you had any like, recommended books or anything like this, but from your experience, what would you, where would you point as a newbie? 
Um, I don't know how to answer that question because there, there is a lot of literature on, uh, like, you know, like uh, on, on some of these verticals, like, uh, for example, on this last part. I mean, you could, uh, there are, for example, a uh, lot of courses, uh, a lot of uh, books on statistics and machine learning who actually explain the correlation. Like, uh, this part, a lot of data warehouse. Uh, um, I, I don't know of particular uh, literature of things that try to take all these steps uh, and, and put them together rather than uh, yeah, looking at all these areas like individually uh, yeah, and, and try to, to get the meaning out of that. So you sometimes split the user types. So if you're looking at frequency of shoppings, you can split them into what kind of characteristics they do when they shop and things like that. So you sometimes will get a regular user, but then sometimes you'll get a seasonality user. And you kind of Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, these were just the most basic thing. I say the first thing uh, that you should look at the first thing, like the cohort. The, yeah. uh, but yes, if you. I don't know if, you, if any of you guys have used tools uh, like Mixpanel, which uh, allow some more advanced uh, web user analytics, like for example, you could do with Google Analytics. Uh, um, there are tools actually that uh, if you configure them properly, they allow you to, to, to do some interesting stuff. The problem that I have with these tools is that, uh, yes, they can get uh, more sophisticated in, in uh, kind of this part, but uh, the top part becomes very tricky. Like I've seen a lot of reports coming from web analytics tool and the finance guys trying to reconcile the numbers. Like, okay, but it should be the same thing. You are clicking on the buy button and that's a revenue. We have a, we have a revenue in pound that we track uh, from the logs uh, and they should be the same from like the finance. These are never the same. <laughs> I've seen even like very big discrepancy because there are a lot of things that, that can be wrong here. Uh, so yeah, the, the only thing that I would say, if you do that, just be careful and to do a lot of uh, data quality check to, to make sure that, that, that the data is correct. Yeah, and we, if I may work for it, uses Google Analytics and we have backend reporting that, that directly, that we trust a lot more than the web metrics. Yeah. Like new users, we can kind of a single person Depending on which device they connect from, it depends on whether they their cookies or not. Yeah. Like a lot of, a lot of errors. Yeah. Absolutely, I recognize. I mean, it's great to have these tools because they allow people, even that is not experiences uh, on the technical side, uh, to get answers. And also, if you are a startup or a new branch of a company, you want to set up things quickly, you can do really things in days or weeks. So it's great that we have these tools. Uh, but yeah, they, they, it's something uh, that we need to keep in mind that yeah, we can just trust them to a certain extent. Uh, 